That's the message, Grandmaster Flash, marking 50 years of hip-hop. Yes, 50 years. And DJ Chiba's come in and uh, going to talk about this momentous anniversary. How you doing? I'm good, thanks, Tommy. I'm back once again <laughs> with the Renegade Master. There you go. <laughs> so what marks it 50 years? Because when I think of, <clears throat> like, you know, commercially, Rapper's Delight sort of 78, that's more like 45 years. So what's, what's marking this 50th year? Yeah, so yeah, this year celebrates 50 years of hip-hop, and um, as a hip-hop fan and the hip-hop community mark this date based on a hand-drawn flyer for a Cool Herc gig at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the rec room, which was, you know, the school gymnasium, if you like, um, 11th of August, 1973, and DJ Cool Herc was um, famously pioneer of hip-hop he was the first guy to not play that um big tracks at the club he would take the album tracks he would dig for breaks he would uh look for extended drum breaks in the middle of tracks and play two copies to extend that drum break um this is kind of what we consider the genesis of hip-hop and so we use this flyer to date the origins of hip-hop it's a bit fluffy the date but you know we'll go with it any excuse to celebrate right okay so that was uh what marked the actual thing of hip-hop but before that you know people were playing at parties but he just took those you know it's it's just like djing i mean it's like 50 years of uh what we know as uh, as, as djing when, when you sort of mix you know mixing so 50 years of mixing as well yeah, I mean, there's obviously, you know, a history of um, mixing records uh, before that. Um, but Cool Herc was the first one to sort of bring that hip-hop um, technicality to DJing. Certainly the first one to be playing two copies of a record to extend a break. Right, um, okay. You know, at that genesis of hip-hop and breakdancing, the evolution of that, it really relied on this... Um, extension of the drum breaks you know they'd say like oh the drum break in the middle of this track is where everyone gets really wild so you know cool herc's like well let's make that last longer we'll use some twin turntables we'll drag it out and you know he's beat juggling <laughs> before it had a name for it but that's what it is but it's that whole idea of in hip-hop of um digging in the crates finding breaks that other people don't have you know pulling influences from all places to create a new thing right okay and uh, the, so the rappers came a bit later the rappers came a bit later yeah the rappers <coughs> the rappers basically came along to hype up the crowd for the dj the dj was the man you know if you watch a film like wild style you know that shows you how this is all happening the dj is the man the mcs are there just to get the crowd hype right right okay um and then i guess uh, that the djs kind of went more to the forefront after that and uh, i was always a bit saddened by that because i really liked the uh well you know when the when the dj was up front and it took a while to sort of get that back to the perspective when djs were more up front and uh, yeah of course well you know this uh, you know, lots of people might cite the first popular hip-hop record as Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang, um, you know, swiftly followed by The Message and stuff like that. And that's when the rap became, you know, the highlighted thing in the track. And the MC started to blow up, and then, you know, that snowballed. <laughs> you know, there was still, there was always album tracks that gave hype to the DJ, you know, Magnificent Jazzy Jeff or whatever, uh, Marley Marl and MC Shan, that sort of stuff where they're, giving props to the dj again and recognizing the history of the culture comes from the dj but you know rap overtook djs yeah <laughs> absolutely and of course grandmaster which i imagine came from the the chess <laughs> i imagine so yeah grandmaster flash you know there's grand um, mixer dst from you know the dj from herbie hancock who did uh, the scratching for rocket um yeah Grandmaster Flash. Interestingly, you just played the message by Grandmaster Flash and Melly Mel. Grandmaster Flash had nothing to do with it. He was just more famous than Melly Mel at the time and in that click. So they just put his name on it. <laughs> right, okay. okay. It, uh, it's, you know, 
please feel free to text in, phone in. <laughs> Fact. Absolutely pull me apart on social media, but I'm pretty sure Grandmaster Flash had nothing to do with it other than stamping his name on it. Right, OK. Um, so hip-hop is a subculture, so everything sort of started from that. <coughs> so, you know, you're talking about, um, you know, the DJing, the mixing, the beat juggling, uh, all the stuff, the graffiti, the um, break dancing, um, all of that, you know, rose up as a whole complete subculture, which, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, one of, one of the biggest subcultures ever in musical history. Yeah, it's it's huge <laughs> you know um you know you can't understate how huge it is um and all of this culture came off the back of really hard times you know you listen to the lyrics of the message it's it was pretty rough in the bronx you know it was really bad zulu nation you know played a big part in trying to bring communities together with block parties and hip-hop was a bit of a a healing thing for those communities and it blew up and yeah like you say it kind of grew arms sprouted arms if you like into breakdancing graffiti um emceeing djing um krs1 will you know people say they're the four pillars of hip-hop krs1 will tell you there's a fifth which is knowledge you know um but all of those it's you know the way you dress um you know the way you speak everything you know and it's just become a huge culture that leaks beyond the music you know it's a whole thing it's a lifestyle for many and now um you know multi-billion dollar industry oh uh, i don't think you could put a number on it <laughs> if you no. did it would be trillions you know because it, it extends so much further than music it's yeah but going back to the originator who we started with you know uh so cool Herc, dj cool Herc was around you know certainly he, uh, I, mean, I guess he gets some props but he certainly didn't get the money you know like uh, <laughs> that he started something but i guess that's art and that's how it works sometimes yeah no i'm sure he's got a great sense of um satisfaction <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know money doesn't flow like that um you know sometimes it does you know, so for example the guy who did the the break the amen break you know the drummer who played the amen break for uh, i can't remember the name and you know there was a big feeling after that that he just didn't make any of this money from jungle and the music that ripped it off and then there was kickstarters to try and take that money back to that guy so you know it does happen but yeah cool Herc's still kicking around and he's still djing and still is lauded as you know the originator of that hip-hop dj culture Right, okay. Uh, so, uh, how are you marking this uh, anniversary? I'm going to have a cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, we're, I'm putting on an event. Um, I'm back to the Curzon in Clevedon. Um, if you don't know about the Curzon in Clevedon, it's uh, one of the oldest working cinemas in the world. Um, it's part museum, part um, cinema. It's an incredible place. Um, and we're showing a double bill of wild style um which is the film we talked about earlier sort of showing that birth of hip-hop um you know it's got everyone in it grand wizard theodore the guy who invented scratching you know the furious five um double trouble it's got a character in it that's supposedly a little bit debbie harry um and it kind of shows that culture it's a real window into that culture from the eyes of a couple of graffiti writers um, so we're showing that and back that up we're bringing it f throwing it forward to 2001 with Doug Prey's film called Scratch which is a documentary history about um, the art of turntablism or scratch DJing and how the DJ became such a thing and how DJing um, turned turntables that's hard to say on its head and sort of turned it into a musical instrument so one of the tracks you've brought in, which is the audio that you'll be using um, throughout the uh, Curzon performance, but um, B-Boy Flip 4. Uh, <laughs> That's a fun name, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, for, yeah, many of these projects I do and event projects, um, you know, I've been in talk to you a few times, tell me about things I've done for the BFI and in cinemas and all this kind of um, out-the-club event stuff that I've been doing. Um I work with um, an artist called Toby Whitbread from New Analog, who always does the illustrations and the drawings for the posters. Um, so that gives a bit of continuity in the events we're doing. And we also work with um, a beat producer called Indeed out of Norfolk, who um, loves the challenge. So, 
for the John Carpenter film we did you know he took the soundtrack and remixed it and flipped it into a way that we could have fun with and for this um, I've dug out loads of the original breaks from Wildstyle and sent them to him and he's flipped them and turned around kind of put a modern twist on them and uh, yeah this is one of the ones let's check it out conversation with DJ Chiba talking about 50 years of hip hop and an event coming up at the Curzon so you've got two films to show How, how's that going to work um, uh, you're playing them straight yep uninterrupted um, it's our event starts at 6pm um, with Scratch starting at 7 and Wild Style later about quarter past 9 um, around these films, though, we're continuing to celebrate hip hop culture with some um, fringe events in the venue. Uh, like I said, the venue's incredibly beautiful and it's got lots of um, lush bar area and like the auditorium's amazing. Um, so we've got some fringe events happening, um, including a breakdance showcase with a guy called Nesta, who's amazing. Um, I'll be DJing some live um, b boy breaks for him, so we'll be fluidly jamming our way through that just before wild style um in the bar we've got some um portable turntables set up for scratching so everyone can jump up and jam um that's been supported by scratch pro audio um we've got um projected graffiti and we've got pie from the beatbox collective coming in um all of this you know, it's all designed so we can embrace the jam format of hip hop and hopefully kind of create some really unique musical moments um, between, you know, scratch DJs, beatboxers, MCs. Um, so, you know, it's not a closed set, if you like. Um, if you've got skills and you're coming along, then step up and, you know, embrace it. Let's do something cool. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's this Saturday at the Curzon Cinema in Clevedon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's Clevedon, uh, only a short drive out of Bristol, and it is um, an amazing cinema. If you've not been, um, I highly recommend it. The um, yeah, we were talking about the history of scratching um, and uh, the Grand Wizard Theodore, um, who came out with Rocket. Now I can't 
exactly remember the date of Rocket, but it was fairly <coughs> early. Now, before that, Herbie Hancock was a jazz legend and yeah, you know, indeed. Um, just an amazing, amazing uh, musician, came out with some uh, classic, classic jazz stuff. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened really. He must have, well, I guess he must have been influenced. I, I tell you what happened to Herbie Hancock was the fair light. <laughs> you know, he discovered samplers basically. And that's great. Like you say, Grand Wizard Theodore is. Um, is the originator of the scratch he invented the scratch um the dj on herbie hancock's rocket is grand mixer dst with the fr- fr- fresh fr- 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 fresh um and if you watch the movie scratch lots of the most famous scratch djs in the world from mixmaster mike and cuba and everyone kind of cite that seeing that on tv was the moment when they went oh <laughs> that's cool i want to do that um, so yeah, Rocket is, you know, it's that uh, Concord moment for many in the Scratch world. So you've got, uh, you brought in a couple of tracks. One is the original Rocket, and then uh, the second one um, featuring all the DJs you're saying? So. Yeah, so um, in the movie, this Doug Prey movie, Scratch, uh, like I said, they all talk about Rocket being a big moment for them discovering mm-hmm. Scratching, seeing Scratch DJing for the first time. And um, in response to that, they all jumped on a remix following the movie. Um, it's on the soundtrack for the movie as well. Okay, this is uh, this is Rocket. This takes me back.
Wow, Rocket takes me back. Um, fantastic. Uh, yeah, let's just name the um, the original scratch on that. The guy who influenced everybody. He's a grand mixer, DST. There you go. Whatever happened to him? Are you still kicking around? Is he? Yeah. There you go. So, uh, 50th anniversary of, being, of hip-hop being marked. Uh, we were talking uh, about a lot of the gigs in New York, which just look amazing. Yeah. I mean, not to overshadow what we're trying to do in Bristol, <laughs> but yeah, wow. There's, yeah. There's, some, there's some lineups going there. There's uh, Rock the Bells and LL Cool J got something huge going on um with you know everyone run dmc roxanne shanty marley mall just you know everyone you could name from the back in the day krs1 uh, as big one in the yankee stadium you know i think some of those events will be absolutely mind-blowing <laughs> And for um, most of us who can't get over to New York to see all those amazing gigs, I did enjoy uh, earlier this year at the Grammys when they also marked 50 years of hip-hop and uh, just had a, a great lineup of old-school rappers and people throughout the history. Uh, I particularly liked um, Run DMC. It came along and DMC had a Beastie Boys T-shirt, which was just marked respect for the Beastie Boys. Uh, yeah. Of course, weren't there because um, no MCA, but, you know, th- that was respect to the Beastie Boys from DMC. Yeah. Well, you know, they toured together a lot absolutely. and you know it was a back and forth love you know which is great yeah, absolutely i was lucky enough to see the together forever tour when it came to um birmingham uh, wow. DMC and beastie boys uh the last track you bought in is uh, peanut butter wolf um tell us about that oh this is tale of five cities um this is um from the album my vinyl ways a ton peanut butter wolf if you don't know is the head honcho at stones Throw records um really influential west coast Hip hop label. Um, this was the first track I heard on the radio that made me go, "Damn, that's so dope! I want to get involved in that. I want to go." <laughs> right, personal personal influence there. Absolutely. So this is this was my rocket moment. You know. <laughs> right. Okay. Here's a little story that must be told. About. Here's a little story I got to tell about the This is a story that must be told. Let's, let's, let's do it like this. Yes, yes, fantastic. Uh, Peanut Butter Wolf, that was your influence. Uh, chatting to DJ Chi about 50 years of hip-hop. Uh, the event at the Curzon, um, when can people uh, find more details of that? Uh, you can follow us on all the socials, DJ Chiba or Curzon Clevedon, um, or just head for the Curzon website. Well, thank you very much for coming in. It's been great to chat to you. Uh, I hope more people mark the 50 years of hip-hop. It would be great to see, you know, people doing DJ sets, throwing in 
everything <laughs> and like how how do you do it i saw uh dj uh shadow and cut chemist do a thing um where you know they, they they put in all the original samples and that that was an amazing gig yeah i mean moving at that kind of speed with uh the original records is is quite an undertaking <laughs> but amazing to see yeah we're gonna play you out with uh sonic now uh, that was a sort of very early track yeah, super early. So this Sonic talking all that jazz was um, the lyrics in it really highlight the fact that they were sampling records, you know, really underlining that and talking about why they're doing it. And right at a time when sort of um, legal cases were starting to be brought against hip hop acts for um, unlawful sampling. Um, Sonic, famously Prince Paul, who produced, you know, Three Feet Iron Rising, etc. So right right again a real landmark moment in hip-hop this track yeah, absolutely absolutely you know that someone could uh just uh, be in their bedroom and just link all these kind of like little samples of music together and make another oh, track is uh yeah. you know it, it, it's uh, part of that whole origination that perhaps you know in a way we take for granted you know. thanks ever so much for coming in it's been great to see you oh, bless you thanks to me no no don't get me wrong now see, i love stetsasonic now see i'm talking about sampling records well in that case You see, you misunderstood. A sample is a tactic, a portion of my method, a tool. In fact, it's only of importance when I make it a priority. And what we sample's up by the majority. But you a minority in terms of thought. Narrow-minded. And poorly taught about hip-hop fame or the silly game. To erase my music so no one can use it. You step on us and we'll step on you. Can't have your cake and eat it too. Talking all that jazz, jazz. Jazz and proof, and when you lie and address something you don't know, it's so whack that it's bound to show. When you lie about me or the band, we get angry. What about our pen start writing again? And the things we write are always true, sucker. Let's get a grip now. We talk about you. Seems to me that you have a problem, so we can see what we can do. Some them. They rap the fans, you must be mad. Cause we're so bad, we get respect you never had. Tell the truth, James Brown was old. Tell Eric and Rock came out with I got soul. Rap brings back old R. And if we was not, people could have forgotten We want to make this perfectly clear And we're talented and strong and have no fear Of those who choose to judge but lack pizzazz Talking all that jazz, jazz. Now we're not trying to be a boss to you 
just want to get across to you That if you're talking jazz, the situation is a no-win You might even get hurt, my friend Stessa Sonic, the hip-hop band And like Sly and the Family Stone, we will stand Up for the music we live and play, play And for the song we sing today For now, let us set the record straight And later on we'll have a forum and a formal debate But it's important you remember, though What you reap is what you sow Talking all that jazz, jazz. 